and welcome to Exploring with the Estuarium. My name is Ariel and I'll be your educator. Today we're going to learn about the geography of the Puget Sound and how it was formed. After today's lesson, you'll be able to answer questions such as, how are glaciers formed, what is a fjord, and how old is the Puget Sound? Millions of years of geological forces and weather conditions shaped islands, mountains, lakes, and other formations in Washington and the Pacific Northwest. During the Mesozoic era, about 100 million years ago, a large landmass crashed into the western side of North America. When the two land masses collided, it permanently joined them together. This geological event is called docking and added 50 miles to the Pacific Northwest coastline. Docking events continued to occur over the next 75 million years, creating the San Juan Islands, the Olympic Mountains, and the bottom of the edge of the coastline called the Pacific Plate. During the pushing up of the mountains, a low area called the trough formed between them. Water filled the trenches, creating the Puget Sound. All of this large geological change happened at the beginning of the Pleistocene epoch, also known as the Ice Age. During the Ice Age, the Puget Sound region was covered by glaciers at least seven different times. Over the last two million years, glaciers that covered the area carved the Pacific Northwest. Glaciers are formed when snow remains in the same area year-round, where enough snow accumulates to transform into ice. Each year, a new layer of snow compresses the previous layer. The force of compression makes the snow recrystallize into sugar-like grains. These grains become larger over time with less space in between the individual grains, causing the snow to slowly compact and increase in density. After about a year, the snow turns into an intermediate state between snow and glacier ice called fern. As more snow pushes down, the large ice crystals compress to form glacier ice. This process can take more than 100 years. The last glacier that covered the area was the Vashon Glacier. The Vashon Glacier spread from Olympia to Spokane and covered the land except for the higher mountain peaks. In some areas, the ice was 3,000 feet thick. The Vashon Glacier began to melt about 15,000 years ago. Temporary ice dams holding billions of gallons of water from the melting glaciers were formed in eastern Washington. The ice dams became weak and burst, releasing water that flooded and created the channeled scablands in the Grand Coulee. As the ice sheets retreated, it continued to carve a new landscape called a fjord. Fjords are long, narrow, U-shaped valleys that fill with seawater and are a result of retreating glaciers. Two ice lobes covered the Puget Lowlands on the west side of the Cascade Mountains. The glacier was split into two around the Olympic Mountains. The Wanda Fuca lobe moved west and the Puget lobe moved south towards Seattle. The Puget lobe left deposits of clay, sand, soil, rock, and mud as it moved. Glacial till is sediment deposited directly by the ice. And outwash is sediment deposited by the meltwater in front of the glacier. Both glacial till and outwash make up most of Puget Sound's surface. As the glacier moved, it scraped off sediment from the ground and moved it on top of, within, beneath, and in front of the ice. Glaciers can lift, mix, and move rocks from the size of large boulders to fine grains of clay. Most of the Puget lowland is covered in glacial sediment, but exposed bedrock can still be found. Southern areas of the Puget lowland is partially covered with ancient lava flows, and in the north, the San Juan Islands are composed of metamorphic rocks that are over 160 million years old. As the glacier moved, it also created many long and narrow hills. Underneath the glacier, the melting water was at work carving valleys like the Puget Sound, Lake Washington, Lake Union, Lake Taps, and Lake Sammamish. After the glaciers melted and the climate started to become warmer, the newly scoured land allowed for trees and other native plants to grow. Along with plants, animals inhabited the area. There was life in this region many thousands of years ago, like horses, bison, mammoths, and mastodons, all seen in Washington's fossil records. Archaeologists believe human beings did not live in the Puget Sound region until after the Ice Age, because the weather conditions would have made it hard for them to survive. Puget Sound that we see today was carved about 13,000 years ago, when the ice dam across the Strait of Juan de Fuca 
first, which allowed the salt water from the Pacific Ocean to fill the Puget Sound and mix with the fresh water from the Olympic and Cascade Mountain ranges. The Puget Sound is made up of five distinct basins that are interconnected. Windby Basin, Central Basin, South Basin, Admiralty Inlet, and Hood Canal. The basins are separated by underwater shelves called sills that are about 150 feet deep. They are barriers that slow water circulation and trap pollution, reducing the flushing of water between the Puget Sound and the Pacific Ocean. The Puget Sound is still changing. This region is prone to earthquakes, tsunamis, and landslides. These forces of nature continue to move and sculpt our landscape. Earthquakes occur when rock inside the earth moves or breaks. The movement happens due to stress buildup from tectonic plates moving. When rocks break or move, it releases a large amount of energy that travels through the earth as seismic waves. Seismic waves can travel hundreds to thousands of miles per hour. Almost all earthquakes happen on a fault, which are features in the earth where rocks move past each other. Faults happen at or near the area of large tectonic plates because each plate moves in a different direction. The movement of faults can build mountains, tear continents apart, and move tectonic plates thousands of miles. Since about 1870, there have been 15 large earthquakes to shake the state. Native Americans who lived in the Puget Sound for thousands of years have oral stories that talk about large earthquakes and tsunamis. The most common cause of tsunamis is a large earthquake below or near the ocean floors. Landslides and volcanic activity can also trigger a tsunami. Tsunamis are series of waves that are often large and destructive. Washington is at risk of four main types of tsunamis. Distant tsunamis, which are created by a distant earthquake or landslide and travels across the ocean. Cascadia subduction zone tsunamis are created by a large magnitude 8 to 9 earthquake off the Washington, Oregon, or British Columbia coast. Local earthquake tsunamis, which are created in a large body of water from an earthquake on local faults like the Seattle or Tacoma faults. And lastly, landslide-caused tsunamis, caused by a large landslide occurring underwater or slides from land into water. Washington is one of the most landslide-prone states in the country. Almost all landslides move down a slope. A landslide occurs when the strength of the rock, soil, or sediment becomes less than the force of gravity. Because Washington gets a lot of rain, the water can cause landslides. When the extra weight of water is added to the soil or rock, it lowers the strength of the material to hold together. Water reduces friction, causing the gravitational force to become greater, resulting in the soil and rocks to move downward on the slope. Any changes on the Earth's surface that increases a slope like removing dirt at the base of a hill, or that reduces the friction of the slope, such as a rainstorm, can increase the chances of a landslide. Now we're going to do a little hands-on activity to help better understand how glaciers and natural forces change the landscape. For this demonstration, we're going to make an edible glacier. You'll need a few things from your kitchen, a granola bar or candy bar, ice cream, crushed cookie, and chocolate chips. Any of these items can be substituted for something similar, and you'll need a plate to build your glacier on. The candy bar is our foundation and represents the hard bedrock. Place the bedrock on your plate any way you like. I'm creating a steep mountain slope. Next, we add our crushed cookie pieces, which will be our soil. Sprinkle the cookie pieces all over the plate to cover the surface and dirt. You can add your chocolate chips next to act as large boulders. Lastly, we will add our frozen layers of ice cream. The ice cream is our glacier. I'm placing my glacier right in the center of my landscape. This is one time you get to play with food and learn. Now the hard part. We have to wait. We are going to observe how our glacier will change our landscape that we just created. I'm going to use the magic of time lapse to speed up the melting of my glacier.
As you can see, our glacier has started to melt, creating a waterfall, or in this case, an ice cream fall that streams down the side of the Candy Bar Mountain. The glacier melt pushes through the soft crumbled cookie, or soil, and easily pushes out our chocolate chip boulders. Our glacier has really changed. It has created low-lying areas with streams, moved soil and rock, all while slowly retreating. Once your glacier has retreated, it's time to eat. Washington's geology is complex and awe-inspiring. A large part of Washington's population lives or works in the Puget Sound or coastal areas. We rely on a healthy coast and Puget Sound ecosystem. Our actions on land and water impact the places we live, work, and play. Next time you're outside, take a look at the beautiful landscape around you because it took millions of years to make. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Exploring with the Estuarium. If you liked our video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wish to continue to get more of our educational videos, Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook at the Puget Sound Estuarium. Bye!